Good morning, welcome back to DH Crouch Marine Limited. Um, I've been a little bit out of the loop for a while. We um, uh, went for the exciting adventure of moving house before Christmas. Um, and that was, uh, how shall I put it, an interesting experience. Uh, we managed to do it. Um, I'm now without a workshop. I'm waiting for the weather to warm up. As you can see, the van every morning is frosty. Uh, and I can put together a, a new outbuilding. At the moment, I'm having to uh, just do the mobile workings at the moment. So I don't actually have a workshop to do anything as yet. As soon as it warms up, I can pour some concrete, get a foundation in and get a building put up. But at the moment, I'm just contending with uh, cold weather and defrosting the van in the mornings, which is lovely. It's lovely up here. I'm in Boston, UK. Um, forerunner to Boston, US. I'm sure that has relevance to somebody. Whenever you Google Boston, it always comes up US for some reason. But there you go. Anyway, enough of me waffling. Let's get this show on the road. See you in a bit. check on this um, beta marine that we checked over before I've got here just a little bit earlier than the tide but um, it's in I can get down there get the engine started up give it a quick test the only thing we didn't do last time was a co2 test it's smoking a bit so I just want to make sure it's not a head gasket or something like that um, if it's just the injectors then they can be removed and sort out later today or whatever the customer wants to do but let's get unloaded and get on with it So I just wanted to clarify what I was doing here. So opening up the engine hatch, um, initially when I first checked the engine out, the exhaust riser had um, rusted on machine screws which held it on. Um, because the heads were so damaged, I'd have to probably cut the heads off of those to remove the riser, which would give me access to the tube stack because of the length of it. Um, and if none of this was practical, taking the manifold off the engine and taking it to the workbench and using proper tools to locate and drill concentric would have been preferred because you can easily damage things with a pistol drill. Um, the other thing I was going to do before I got into and think was do a block tester and then suck the gases out with a block testing chemical kit to check for a head gasket failure. So yeah, it was just a question of which way around do we do things and what happens and how does the day unfold. So hopefully that makes more sense than uh, my first video. And there's the box of bits I've got to play with today. Hose clamp, nice new end caps, anode included, a hose tail, two ended like 20, 22, and no, that's going to be 22 and 28 by the looks of it. Uh, 22 millimeter and 28 millimeter diameter barb as well, so it's a proper, proper hose tail. Some self amalgamating tape good stuff that another hose clip more clips some o-rings for the end caps and a little bag of exciting goodies which I've opened before I'll just try not to nope that's actually empty that's 
against that. So it's a fair bit to do, but it's access. I've got to try and work out how I'm going to get in here. I need, my head, I need to go and get my head torch a minute as well. I can only carry so much in one run. But let's get it started. Let's find a key and get it started. Okay, so part of the CO2 test is to allow the thermostat to open. So looking at the engine, we've got a temperature range of, let's have a look here. There you go, put a cursor in there, 2.8. So it's cold at the moment. I've isolated the power, power from the shoreline, so that won't interfere anything. Isolate switch is on. Uh, for some reason that pipe appears to be warm. But anyway, right, let's go and get started and we'll watch it warm up and then I can do my test. Tides in. So we're back at tick over now for idle. So it's running at, according to this, 1000 RPM, but that doesn't sound like it to me, but I might be wrong. I don't know how much I trust that particular gauge today, but it really uh, caused the panic. So, straight away we're seeing a huge difference in temperature. So that's the thermostat housing I've got um, highlighted. Down. That's the main crankshaft pulley at the bottom. Immediately we've got a temperature there, so that's interesting. Got hot very quickly. The fuel going in is um, just below 5 degrees, so it's quite cold. The heat exchanger there. That's warming up nicely. Okay, so we've been running for about 10 minutes now, so that's 60. Okay, we've sort of peaked past 65, so that's good. I think we may be in good position to put this back at tick over. I can do a test on the recording um, system now. That's the oil filler cap, I think. Yes, it is, yeah. The thermostat housing saying 68, well, I need 70. That might be cool. Doesn't look to me like the ordinary is doing much work. It's cold still. Same with the, uh, the other one as well. The engine itself is warming up nicely. We've got a hot spot on the block there. And just this is back at the uh, centrifugal, sorry, yeah, centrifugal uh, circulation pump, which is the main cooling pump for the engine. The raw water pump is still cold, so that'll be taking cold water from the river uh, there. Alright, okay. Well, we've not got much room here. Well, a bit of gas, which is normal. Pressurised system, Let's have a look. Okay, so we just want to get the gas out of this. We don't want to get the um, fluid because it can have a misreading. Let me just get this out here. Okay, I brought along CO2 test kit. Pretty straightforward bit of kit, but it can really be uh, a no brainer. I don't think this is going to be a problem at all. It's not as smoky as I thought it'd be. Um, so this liquid is basically, it's blue liquid. It reacts with um, gases in the exhaust process. Um, it's a chemical reaction, basically. Holds a bit stiff from the cold. Squeeze the bolt and it sucks the air out, draws any gases. If it goes yellow, then we've got a problem. And looking at this, I think we're fine. Have a look at the colour in the light. No. If anything, I would say that the, the a bit of smoke coming out, the exhaust is not heavy. I thought it was a lot heavier than that. Maybe I'm missing something, but at the moment, it, from my perspective, it seems good. The engine's hot, started from cold. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that was just to, just to eliminate the possibility of something more sinister. I think probably just the injectors are 
they're a bit old now basically um, for good practice it might be an idea to take them out and do the nozzles and change them and but you know at this stage I say it's not the end of the world so I think we'll just crack turn the engine off now go and get the head torch and we'll crack on and get in and do the manifold do, do the very best I can today I have to remove a lot of stuff unfortunately I uh, can't see how else I'm gonna do it but um bring it back into it Most of coolant drawn out for now. Let's um, do some work on these hoses here, I think. Hence the uh, new pieces I've been left. So coolant level is draining off. I'll probably have to drain off more in a minute, but at the moment I want to get the um, get to the uh, manifold. I'm going to try and do it in the least opposing way I can. Now the the, the end cap inside here isn't a problem as far as I've understood it and I've only got the one at the stern anyway so I remember what my thinking was here and you want the tubes to taken out maybe I don't know right I think I'm gonna go inside there and do my best to get at the um Maybe a hacksaw is a good idea. I can't remember what, where, I, where I was with this now. Right, I think I think it's put the cap in place. Um,
problem with broken studs and things like that is if you try doing things by hand, we're just not very accurate. Um, and I'm drilling into cast aluminium. You know, steel with aluminium, it's aluminium's going to give up if I slip, and I'm, the chance of getting concentricity of that is going to be difficult. So this is going to be a bit of a challenge. Well, <laughs> something's going right today. I've got three out, and the fourth one is moving. So I think. I'm going to be lucky that I can just clean the surface, chase the threads out with a metric tap. The gods are smiling on me today. I must have kept Poseidon See happy something. somewhere. Yeah. believe it's actually working. <laughs> I was really dreading having to drill this out all out. As I say, trying to do it by hand is just not going to happen. And taking the whole manifold off would have been the next stage. And the problem with that idea is you've got another set of studs to contend with, so you just could be moving from one problem to another. And this way, I'm not interfering with anything else now. So the aim of today is get this and the tube stack off and then the rest should be pretty straightforward. Oh. Well these have come out. I can't believe it. <laughs> Result. So yeah. We have victory! Some days are good. So, um, for some reason, I've just chased these all out, but the camera didn't record for some reason. I don't know why. I'm really sorry. So, basically, what I've done, I've run a tap in here and bottomed out and put these um, aluminium, sorry, these stainless um, cap heads in there. All I, all I did, I actually filmed the whole thing, but it didn't record. That's just really annoying. I could repeat the process in principle. And just get you out of the tap. That's so frustrating when that happens. So basically, I just have my tap drive. I'll get one of these out of the way. I was using brake cleaner to keep everything clean and dry. I don't want any residues building up in here. So basically, all I've done is I've just uh, made sure the tap was clean. I was running these in with a, a ratchet drive, gently feeling its way in, and just making sure that all these were clean. There was a little bit of resistance from them, but not as much as I was expecting. So it makes me wonder why they were holding on to those old bolts so much. Um, so I keep saying bolts and I shoot screws. I don't think it matters really. You'll know what I'm talking about. Um, as I uh, as I'm putting each one out, I was giving the tap a clean uh, with the spray, and then going to the next one. But I'm also giving this surface a, um, a clean back with the with the uh, engineer's file. So I was just following the contours and keeping it flat against the face. There's a new gasket. And a new um, a new elbow going on, um, but I'll clean out those. There's a little bit of metal in there as well. But once I'm done, what I'll do is I'll come around with the um, some blue roll, wipe up all this oil, and get some spray in here. And just have a little clean up of the engine. I've got a little portable Hoover as well. I'll have a little clean up. Um, try and make it look presentable. What I also plan to do is the end of these hoses that I like that. I'm going to got got, got a hose cutter. I'm just going to a bit of water in there. I'm going to cut the end of these hoses off and just put the hose back on there's plenty of slack there just don't want to risk um yeah you can see just inside i don't know if you can or not just inside there's loads of rubbish and i don't really want to put those on to on as they are just little touches basically little things that go a long way right we're gonna go in the front now um i need to extract the let me turn this light off i can talk to you properly so i need to go around the front pull off the elbow and the hose at the front of the engine. That will drop any of the last water out the bottom of the engine. I can't actually get to any taps anywhere. Normally they tap on an engine. I would have thought there would be for the main block on this, but I'm struggling to see where it is if there is. Um, I'll be honest with you, it doesn't matter. I've got the vacuum pump for the coolant. I'll drop it in the bilge, I'll pump it out. Uh, I've got the wet and dry portable little hoover and I'll have a clean up at the end anyway. So um, I tried to use the Pellet pump. I've got a pellet pump for oil, pellet pump for water, or coolant, whatever else. So, as I say, um, it doesn't really make a difference as long as it's clean at the end. 
Right, let's go around the front and go and do that bit. Um, I think I might bring all the tools that I've collected, just because I think I'm going to need them around the front. I'll bring it back in a sec. Okay, so we've got the opposite end of the tube stack, so the end cap and off. I'm going to take the, the front end off and see if we can get the tube stack out because the tube stack is actually blocked. Um, partly, I'm sort of very much aware of the corrosion problem on this. I'm hoping that this won't be. A little slog, but we'll soon find out. Um, let's have a look. See if the uh, stack would move on the bolt keeping it in place, but it doesn't appear to want to do that. It's not too bad looking. Lovely. I can get that cleaned up. And the, they can just about make out. I think that was even leaking a bit actually. Right, I'm going to go and get a drift out the van, see if I can drift that out in a sec. I'm just going to see if I can get to it from here with this. Hmm. Is it going to move, or is it going to be? Is it going to be a game? It's going to be a game. Let me go and get my sockets and drives. Maybe you can actually see what I'm doing in there. I like the camera. The light keeps blocking the camera's view. Can you make out in there? So, if I can get that out and give it a good clean up inside and the tube stack, I think we've made some really good progress with this because it is leaking from this end. So it'd be good to um, turn this off. I've got to change the battery in a sec, it's going to die. So I think just a quick recap. So basically, I've taken the elbow off. I've managed to get the threads or the broken studs or broken uh, machine screws out. Um, they're not bolts, the machine screws are fully threaded shanks. I'm going to change them for stainless. I think that's a better idea, cap heads. That hopefully will prevent that happening again. But the, the, the elbows aren't actually stainless, so they, they're actually um, coated. Quite surprised by that actually. I would have thought a stainless one would be better, but expensive, no doubt. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to do my best to get the tube sack out. I don't really want to go at it. It'll either come or it won't. And if it starts to go and gives, then, then I will work it and get it out. But I think it needs to come out. I've now got plenty of room to do this in situ, which is great. Excuse me, I'm regurgitating it. But um, yeah, as I say, to, to actually remove this, this whole manifold was probably what I was expecting to do. I mean, truth be told, I was expecting a head gasket failure, but that, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think that's happening, which is great. So basically, I can service these parts and come down and service these bits, put some fresh coolant and um, water, it with all fresh antifreeze and water to make the coolant mix up for the closed side. Then that's what I've been, been asked to do, and that's what I've achieved. So we're on the right path today. It might be a long day, but hopefully we'll get it done. Right, I'll bring you back in a second. Well, <clears throat> let's get these um, end cap and tube stack a little bit cleaned up a bit. Uh, let's put the tap away. A good start. Uh, right. Too many tools are not enough. I'm going to have to go through my van soon, I think, and then unload all the stuff. It's getting a bit heavier than I really want it to be. I don't think I'm overweight by any measure, but nonetheless. Be careful. 
careful. I think. Um, he's put the anode in, I'll do that in a sec.
is my only Snap-on tool I own. It's a camera, so the chances of me dropping in the water are somewhat less than, say, a socket or something. Right, what's going on here? Is that right? Turn the camera so I can see where I'm looking, upside down, and... So I'm just checking to see if the corrosion on this um, nipple end is bad, where I can't see. It's hard to make out. I think it's okay, but it is a bit progressive. It's definitely, definitely some uh, nasties in there. What about inside? Uh, can I brighten up the light? Doesn't look as if it's um, got too bad. You can see in there, it's not much to see really. Sort of peering around upside down. Well, <laughs> no, I think it's all right. It's hard to see really. Oh, that's enough. It's just um, good to have a quick look. Not a bad little camera, that actually. I call it snap on, it comes with a price tag, but um, it was a nice simple camera that I have in a little pack like that and just the odd occasion when I need it. So I've got it. Right, let's get this all back together. So I went to the van and went and got some slightly bigger Jubilee clips that are stainless. Again, stainless. I prefer stainless really because um, there's chances of any corrosion issues. So. Yeah, that's I just fit on without having to stress too much, which is better. The ones that are sent out, I think, just a bit too small in my opinion. So then it's a blank slate. Uh, I'll check the level on it as well, actually, before I go. Um, yeah, it's a little bit more to do. Not quite finished, but we're, we're pretty much there. So I'm, I'm really pleased we've, we've um, managed to get in and get that uh, tube stack out without any major stress. Um, I was expecting it to be an absolute pig. Um, but for all intents and purposes, I mean, it wasn't exactly easy, but it wasn't exactly uh, the impossible challenge I was expecting. Right, I'll bring you back.
Well, that was a productive day, if, um, if ever there was one. We managed to get over and do, I'd say, majority of the things that desired. There's a couple of bits that ideally need to come back and do, do still. Uh, the engine's been uh, started up, tested, up to temperature. I've got um, thermal imaging footage, as you've seen. Uh, CO2 test was done just because I want to make sure that there wasn't um, a major problem somewhere in the cooling system. Because if there was, then the work I would have done today would have been kind of pointless at this stage. Um, once that was done, I was happy to then start playing with the heat exchanger and you know find a way to get the tube stack out and that sort of stuff. But once I got the air, the riser off, the studs did shear off, which I knew they were going to do, I had a feeling. But managed to get them out and they didn't break inside and I managed to get a tool on to, to take them off, so that was a win. And I traced out the threads. Unfortunately, when I filmed it, for some reason the camera just didn't either push, did push play properly or it didn't um, didn't pick up. But either way, I um, cleaned out the threads with a, with a tap, bottoming tap, um, just to make sure they're clean. And then I faced off the gasket surface with an engineer's file, as I sort of showed you. Um, and then we went through everything else that needed doing. Uh, cleaned, uh, emptied out all the cooling system, uh, the closed cooling system, uh, to put new fresh um, antifreeze and whatnot in there. Um, but yeah, productive day. I think we're okay though so far. Unfortunately, I now can't test it because the tide's out and it's dark. So the owner's going to come and do that. Um, it should be fine. I mean, it's only the cooling system I've played with. Um, the injectors probably want doing on that engine. Although I did run it and I was testing it, I could see exhaust gas coming out a bit grey, a sort of bit whitish. Um, I'm told under load it gets a bit heavier. So. I'm happy at this stage to say it's not a major concern with the engine, it's just the componentry that needs servicing. Um, looking at the age of the engine and the general state of it, I'd suggest that those injectors have done a lot of hours and they're probably overdue being serviced anyway. So it's good practice to do injectors um, and they can do a lot of damage if you don't do them and they get worse and worse and worse, um, you know, knocking all sorts of damage going on in the engine. So yeah, a um, bit foggy, a bit cold, a bit sniffly, excuse me, but yeah. Thanks very much.